Yo, what's going on everybody? I have a brand new and kind of unique, I would say, build for Necromancer, No Minion, Shadow Damage Every Time. Shout out to my boy, Magicka the Hex. He has uh, come up with this build. He's been playing Shadow Necromancer since the release. And let me tell you, this one is amazing. In AoE, it does over a billion damage with a dot tick. Yes, a billion. I will show you some screenshots later. And normally you would say, right, AoE is great. So single target must probably be bad, right? Well, the absolute opposite this build excels even in the single target uh, you will see it the uh, later on on the boss of this pit this is 108 tier pit and not only does amazing damage but also the cc from tendrils and just in general survivability with the barrier layer from bone storm which is up almost non-stop thanks to the gripify lucky hit that reduces the cooldowns and also the damage reduction from the skill itself bone storm uh, but also fortifies uh, every time as well or most of the times, and you just can see it doesn't struggle with survivability at all. Uh, so once again, the CC is great. Basically, just forming a corpse, popping tendrils into blood mist, and then spamming a, your a blight life away. Uh, on top of obviously using decrypify as a starter on the mobs, so you can get the clone reduction. So yeah, blood mist nonstop uptime. Blood mist is the best skill in the in the game because it provides you an iframe, which is invincible frame. That means you're immune to any damage. Well, just any damage, right? So that's the best defense layer in this game. So that's why Necromancer is going to be the best probably for pushing the highest tiers of the pit. Uh, because of the thing right here. But that would require some perfect play because of positioning, stuff like that. And also I heard that after pit tier 100, the mob level, uh, sorry, the enemy damage does not increase anymore. It's the same uh, in pit tier 150 as in pit tier 100 when it comes to damage. So... If you can out tank the majority of attacks, you can just full focus on damage. And yeah, as you can see, the damage is easy. You see, has a deleted effect, no problem. So I'm gonna fast forward here a little bit. Uh, take a look at the boss at the end. You will see also the stagger on the boss on the stagger bar is ridiculous like three attacks, three hits, and it's a full stagger bar. Really crazy. He got also pretty unlucky on the boss here because of the uh, it was it's the marksman which is the worst of them all in my opinion I hate it because of his stealth. So yeah, the longer I believe the longer uh, Magicka here could tag the more he would stack the damage from the dots. So that's not really possible with marksman because he goes into stealth. As you can see, he still has nine minutes left and almost at a summoning of a boss. So that's that's really impressive here. Eight minutes mark right here, summoning a boss. Good stuff. Good stuff. So we're going to take a look, you got our Outlaw Sharpshooter, ramp up a little bit here, stagger goes through the roof as you can see, like it, it, it gets stacked up and whatnot. Now he's in the stealth, the worst mechanic out there, you get the stagger, a window here for the burst, look at the damage from dots, like how is it possible, that's crazy. When he first showed me this pit, this run, uh, and I saw this boss, I was like, why am I even bothering running it on my barbarian man? Like as it does double double swing, double swing on my barb, I spent like six minutes on the boss. Ten tiers lower than this, not even actually, even more than that, fifteen. And uh, yeah, this is just an absolute blast. Insane damage, insane. You can see the dot there, tick for half a billion, six hundred thirty million right there on a single target. Jesus, that's crazy. This build is only using one unique item, which is the amulet. So I will show you the planner after this kill. And the rest is just legendaries because of the aspects, and mainly the tempers. Tempers play a huge role, right? So that was the tier 108 done and done. Right here, the last bit. Last couple of hits. Crazy. 108 done, baby. 108. So I'm going to take a... You're going to take a look at the screenshot here a little bit. This is the, um, the damage. As you can see here, it's over a billion, right? Let me just make it a bit lower right here. And boom. That's better. There's a second screenshot that shows over a billion again right here, right? That's insane. This is a boss strength dummy, five of them, so AoE. But on the boss here, you could see like right that's uh 600 million crits or like hits, excuse me. So going over the planner here, I will also post this in the link or in the pinned comment below. So we got the headpiece here. We are running with the undying for the heal, what he cast a skill. So that's just a, another great defensive layer. Intelligence, stacking lucky hit, cooldown reduction. That's what we want. The Decrypify size as well. The chest piece here, we are running the damage reduction maximized for you. Uh, not really care. We don't really care about minions because we don't run that. 
Lucky it on the stun, that's why the stanger goes up so far or so fast on the boss. Essence per second for the resource management. On the gloves we have the of the of the damped aspect for damage increase with shadow damage. When they're afflicted with the Creepify Curse. Once again, lucky it on the stun and shadow dot is over 100 percent And may it's great. The number is crazy how it got how high it goes. Stack and intelligence everywhere is possible because there is a legendary Pergo node that scales from that. We've got the Crippling Darkness here as a temper, and that's the Lucky Hit stun from Shadow Damage. And here's a Lucky Hit on the Freeze, Enter the Stagger, Armor, you will, we want Armor Cap for 9230, which will be updated in the description of your character stats after the patch that lands today. Here we have the Bone Storm Berry, like I talked about, a very good stuff. On the boots, essence per second, just like the chest piece, movement speed, stacking, that's the only ability for uh, Necromancer. And here we have concussive strikes for the days, another lucky hit, another stagger, but also increased damage. So this multiplier, 20 multiplier percent, it applies to boss when it's staggered. On the 200, the best aspect in the game, I would say, is the blight or blighted aspect. You deal 240% damage increase when you trigger Shadow Blight. And since uh, this build uses Shadow Dot, the Shadow Blight procs. Non-stop, basically, right? You have it up non-stop. Shadow dot over uh, shadow. Well, shadow dot damage goes over 200% of two ender. Chance to for blight to cast twice, right? It goes hand in hand with the amulet here. Ebon piercer blight also shoots four smaller projectiles, also pierce enemies and deal damage over time for three seconds. And also the affixes on this amulet are insanely good. It's got double greater affix here. Essence course of reduction and damage reduction, 24.5%. And obviously, if you had greater affix on the Shadow Dot damage there, it would be even better, but I reckon that must be pretty hard to get. On the rank, we go with Retribution. This is uh, damage to stun enemies. This is also a multiplier that activates on the boss that gets staggered, so on top of the days here. That's why the damage increases so much. And not to mention Elites, right? Like Tendrils stun. So when he pops Tendrils, this is activated onto the enemy enemies on Elites and whatnot. Attack speed. For fast cast of blight intelligence, lucky that's the vulnerable source and perhaps actually pretty often, especially for a lucky hit class like Rogue, Sorg, or Necromancer. A pretty good affix overall on the jewelry. And here we go with some resolution resu generation. Uh, once again, shadow down damage, attack speed intelligence seems to be the same for both of these rings. On the skill setup, we are running Bone Storm, we are running Corpse and Drills, a Blood Mist, a Corpse Explosion, and then a Blight with a Decrypify. Corpse explosion here. Uh, we'll got to go over it in the uh, skill planner. And here also, by the way, we go with intercom. If you stand still, it gets triple bonus damage. So this one is also amazing, as that's what this build does, right? Uh, you stand in place a lot. When it comes to minions passive, we sacrifice them all. A Reaper is here for some shadow damage because it's a multiplier, so it goes hand in hand even more with other multis. And then we go damage to a vulnerable, which is the lucky different rank. And then, of course, bone for attack speed even more so, especially with 200, you kind of need that because that's a slow weapon. So that's the that's the setup here. The skill tree starting off right up top, basic skill. We don't really uh, care about that because we don't use that. Uh, right here, we want to max out imperfectly balanced so our blight hits even more. The cost here doesn't even matter that much because we have the essence per second uh, and overall resource generation on the rings. Blight, max it out, get this 20% uh, multi over here. The fact that when enemies are affected by Blight, they take 20% more damage. We also have Huge Flash. Huge Flash for the corpse making. For corpse explosions and whatnot. One point Blood Mist just to activate it. Uh, corpse Explosion just to trigger or have this upgrade for Darkness, which gives us Shadow Blight uh, stacks. So we can proc the uh, 200 aspect over here. We go with Fueled by Death, another amazing uh, multiplier 9% after consuming Corpse. 6 seconds, which gets consumed with Corpse Explosion. Death Embrace, Death Embrace, I really like this one because it's 2 in 1 node, so they take more damage from you, but you have 12% DR, very good stuff. More damage multiplier, 12% uh, for or 2 enemies that are cursed from Decrypify. Not only have Lucky Hit on the stun, another stagger right on top of the items we have with the temporary, but also this one is amazing, clone reduction, Lucky Hit, that's why we kind of want to stack it. Amazing uh, stuff here. Especially on AoE, but even single target, it works pretty often, so that makes for good uptime for Blood Mist and Bone Storm. Now we max out these nodes. There is a movement speed, but we kind of stacked with from the boots with a double movement speed, so 
You want to stack Gloom for more shadow damage on the enemies. And then also Terror is the same thing. And next up we got Crippling Darkness where we have plus 3 from one item. This is the energy stun but also the shadow damage to them. So that's just insane. I tried to max this on my, um, on my Necromancer on my ult. And I got to 11 out of 3 Crippling Darkness. And it does a lot of damage, so that's pretty insane. We got Necro the Carapace as well for the Fortify. As you can see, the Fortify stays up pretty often, so this amazing passive. And uh, yeah, he, he creates corpses quite a lot. Tendril is here for Blood Orbs. We don't really go vulnerable because we have it from the rings, so there it is. And Blood Orbs also heal you, so that's uh, good stuff. 15% of max HP. If it was base life, it wouldn't be as powerful, but since it's uh, you know uh, max life, it's very good. Also, excuse me for, well, excuse me for the end up top. Next up, we got the damage reduction for standalone. Another great DR for minion, sorry, non minion and necromancer. Uh, we have Memento More here for more sacrifice bonuses from warriors and uh, skilly mages. So, warriors, we have damage increase here, shadow, and here we have vulnerable. And um, here, Bone Storm, uh, mainly for the damage reduction from it. Uh, also, pretty good damage. I mean, not, not the worst, right? And we don't really need crit chance here, so we don't take that. So, it was my bad there. That's why we also don't even take Inspiring Leader for crit chance. Don't need it. Paragon board. We are running a seven a board setup right here. Absolutely min-maxed with some extra souls here on the life nodes. Very good stuff. First board, we go with Gravekeeper. Great stuff over here. Once again, for more damage. It buffs rare nodes, so extra damage and diligence and armor. That, got, that does go a long way. So, good stuff here. Second board, we go with Wither. This one is scaling from the Intelligence, like I mentioned early, earlier. So, you want to stack Int as much as possible. That goes for Incenses. You want to use Incense for your stats. So, I'd number, number one, Incense would be Intelligence. Number two would be All Stats by 15. And then third one is Chorus of War. That increases your stats by 45. So, overall, it's almost 100 Intelligence increase, I think. Which is uh, pretty insane, right? Extra stuff, extra shadow DR, which goes really well on the with the amulet here with the necklace, right? So that's that right there. Over is already over thirty percent DR from enemies affected by by shadow dot, which it's you know that's nonstop. It's affected nonstop. Third board we go flesh eater with sacrificial. We also want to get this ultimate, sorry, the legendary node for forty percent multiplier, because consuming five corpses is pretty easy for six seconds as well. And this one is buffing magic nodes, so extra damage to elites, 20%. Very good stuff. And overall, the, the uh, rare node is also pretty powerful. Fourth board, a bone graft, just for the glyph itself. We go with Avastal. Minimal requirement, as it only needs a uh, dexterity here. And enter 10% multiplier, why not? So, very good for the glyph. And there will be a bloodbath, a fifth board with exploit for vulnerability. So this one adds a bit, a, a bit even more into damage. It actually is maxed out 49 out of 25. A good pick right here. Since we do have even increase the vulnerable here. That is multiplied by the passive from skill tree. So there it is right here. Damage for 45. Extra sauce. Why not? Another one is Hulking Monstrosity. This one is also... Well, we don't really need this one. This one is uh, mainly for the glyph itself. 65 out of 40 backs for the Shadow Dot. So we don't really go for the Rhinos here since, since it's for Golem, which we don't have Golem. But it's to trigger this Glyph and just max it out. 65 Intelligence, 6.6% for 5 Int. Amazing stuff. Almost 100% increase to Shadow Dot. And the last board, we have Ascent of Death with Control, which is damage to CC enemies. This, got, this gets activated. This is almost 120% damage to CC enemies. This gets activated once again to boss that are staggered on top of the retribution on the rank and also the dice aspect here on where was I in the, on the boots. It all gets activated when the boss is staggered. That's why the damage increased so much. Damage to injured, extra armor, but also going for the legendary node, which is very good. Either the R or damage increase, depending on the corpse around or no, no, no corpses, excuse me. And this was pretty much the whole build. I already went over the rotation so in the armor you want to go you could go for maxed out intelligence which is topaz gems but i believe he wanted some uh, extra defensives as well for the pit so he went with some rubies for hp increase so i mean why not and he's got pretty insane gear he told me himself that his gear is very disgusting but good to see his master worked master work worked out 
And overall, I'm a big fan of this build. It makes me really want to try it on my ult because uh, I was always a fan of this uh, sort of the gameplay for the Necromancer since the close beta, where I made a melee clever build for Necromancer. But yeah, I might probably even uh, snipe this uh, Paragon board. But shout out to Magico once again. Thank you very much. And uh, you guys, thank you all for watching. Good luck with your grind. Also stream every day on YouTube and also Twitch. If you guys want to see the journey and whatnot, I would like to see you there. And if you also need help with any boss, stuff like that, just you can hit me up. I'm more than happy to help you also. Or my clan. I also have a clan. You guys can, if anybody's looking for one, you can get you in. But anyways, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Until next time, have a good one and peace.